Can we explain the obesity and diabetes epidemic simply by the number of fast food restaurants or the lack of supermarkets within a community? Well, that's the hypothesis of a new paper published in JAMA Network Open called Longitudinal Analysis of Neighborhood Food Environment and Diabetes Risk in the Veterans Administration Diabetes Risk Cohort. And while it sounds enticing, sure, there's gonna be more obesity and diabetes in places where there's more fast food restaurants. That makes sense. I don't think the science really backs it up in this study, even though their conclusion is that it does. Let's unpack that a little bit because I think there's more important things we should be focusing on than just supermarkets or fast food restaurants. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director of dietdoctor.com, and this is sort of a, a, a great example, I think, of a poor quality study, um, or I shouldn't say poor quality study, poor quality data, low quality data, being promoted as something that makes a big, big difference when it probably doesn't. So let, let's talk about what this study, so there were over 4 million U.S. veterans included in the study, which right away sort of shocked me. I mean, that's a huge cohort, 4 million U.S. veterans without type 2 diabetes. They were enrolled between 2008 and 2016 and were followed through 2018. The mean duration was five and a half years um, of follow-up. And it was just looking back through the health records, basically, to see who developed type 2 diabetes. Now, here's what else is kind of cool, though. They then looked at where these people live and looked at the surrounding um, number of fast food restaurants and supermarkets um, or grocery stores and, and what was the ratio sort of between fast food restaurants and, and grocery supermarkets to see if that correlated. So the hypothesis was the more fast food restaurants, the more likely you are to get diabetes and the more grocery stores, the less likely you are to get diabetes. So let's see if that played out. So in their results sections, they say, the relative density of fast food restaurants was positively associated with a modestly increased risk of type 2 diabetes in all community types. So positively associated, meaning that the more fast food restaurants, the more likely they were to get type 2 diabetes. Well, what was the hazard ratio? How strong of an impact was it? The hazard ratio was 1.01 and 1.02. When I read this, I, I laughed out loud. How can you present data with a hazard ratio of 1.01 or 1.02 in a retrospective study like this and, and assume it's significant? So, you know, a diet doctor for these hazard ratios, we think anything above 2, 2.0, sort of gets your attention. And remember, smoking and the risk of uh, the association of cancer was between 15 and 30, not 1.30, but 30. And here we're talking about 1.01. I mean, I laugh at the, at the red meat, saturated fat, increasing your risk of heart disease and cancer of 1.1 and 1.2. I mean, those, those are, are really weak. But this is 1.01. I mean, it really, when you come to this, something like this, you have to conclude that there's no, no meaningful relationship. And the part about the supermarkets was associated with a lower risk at 0 0.97 or and 0 0.99. Again, you can't get any any thinner, any smaller impact. So I would use this rather than oh, rather than to say their conclusions, right? Their conclusions were tailored interventions targeting the availability of supermarkets may be associated with reduced diabetes risk, particularly in suburban and rural communities, whereas restrictions on fat food restaurants may help in all community types restrictions on fat fast food restaurants. So trying to turn this into a public health initiative that based on this data, we should be restricting fast food restaurants. Look, I'm not a fan of fast food restaurants. I don't think they should be there, but this is a free market society. And this type of data is nowhere near strong enough to say we now have evidence that we should get rid of fast food restaurants for your health. But here's the other thing. Grocery stores, supermarkets aren't necessarily healthy either. What do you see when you go to the checkout? of any grocery store and supermarket. Junk food everywhere, right? There's no halo around supermarkets. Even you know better supermarkets like Whole Foods still have sections of just pure junk food. Organic ingredients maybe, but junk food, it's all over the supermarkets. So rather than focusing on whether you go to a fast food restaurant or a supermarket, we need to focus on fo eating whole foods, real foods, and not the processed junk. You can go to a fast food restaurant and get a couple burger patties 
without the bun, without the fries, without the Coke, without the shake, maybe get a side salad. And that can be a filling and can be part of a healthy diet. Or you could go to the same fast food restaurant and get the French fries and the Coke and the shake and the big old bun with your with your burger. And that's a much less healthy version. Just like you can go to the supermarket and get your meat and your eggs and your fish and your veggies and check out. Or you can go to the supermarket and get your organic crackers or your low-fat, heart-healthy uh, cereals. Um, like we saw in that recent um, post about the, the food rating system from Tufts. You can get your Lucky Charms, which is rated higher than, than ground beef. Not sure how that happened, but you can still get this junk food from the supermarket. So it's not about where you're shopping. It's about what you're eating. So I, 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 I got to say, I laughed when I saw this, uh, the conclusions from this paper, because it just shows how you can't read the headlines, right? The headlines are that it makes a difference whether you live near a supermarket or whether you live near a fast food restaurant, but it doesn't make a difference. What makes a difference is what you're actually eating and the choices you make. And you can make healthy or unhealthy choices in either place. So hopefully this was helpful to, just to help reframe your thought process because we certainly have to reframe our, th our thought process from a policy standpoint, from a medical standpoint, and for, from an individual standpoint. It's about the decisions we make and the food we eat, not necessarily about where we live. All right, please click the thumbs up or subscribe button if you thought this was helpful, and then you get all our updates here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good day.